We are going to take an up-close look at what this sensor really is. And this sensor is known by several names. Some people can call it a vacuum sensor. Some people call it a thermal couple gauge and a vacuum transducer, but they're pretty much all the same. And the purpose of this sensor inside a freeze dryer is to measure the vacuum that's inside the chamber and send a signal to the motherboard. So we're going to go ahead and strip everything away and look inside to see how this thing works because if we know how it works it'll make it easier to understand and easier to fix it well the first part we have here is the heater and the heater is exactly what it sounds like we have power coming in from this prong and this prong and it heats a small little filament and these are very small filaments about the size of a hair in this picture I only show one but in most thermal couple gauges there are actually two in the shape of an X the other component of the thermal couple gauge is the thermal couple itself and this is a little bit of a unit that's in the center of the gauge that as it is heated it actually produces a small amount of current and that signal is also transmitted to the motherboard when the thermal couple gauge is in use it will fill with air or atmosphere or gas and that's what then we're going to use this like little cloud it's symbolic of the gas or the atmosphere that could be inside the greater the atmosphere or the greater the gas, the easier it is for this heated wire to transmit warmth or heat to the thermocouple. And as the thermocouple heats up, it will transmit a signal to the motherboard. However, once the vacuum starts building in the vacuum chamber, the atmosphere or the gas inside the sensor Will, dis will decrease, and as it decreases, the signal being transferred from the heated wire to the thermal, thermal couple will also be reduced and will send a smaller current to the motherboard. Now, one of the problems with freeze drying is that as we freeze dry our food, microparticulates, water vapor, perhaps even oils from the food, and other substance can actually enter this thermal couple gauge and can surround the heated wire and as the heated wire heats up it will actually kind of burn and carbonize uh, some of this food that could be surrounding the wire and as it does so this wire becomes dirty and as this wire becomes dirty it becomes self insulating it's harder for heat to be transmitted from the heated wire to the thermal couple and this will give you a false signal going back to the motherboard. So what we need to do, we need to be able to clean the crud and the dirt off this heated wire. And the best way of doing that is with a cleaner. And a mass airflow sensor cleaner is probably the best because it's a good solvent that won't damage any plastics. So by spraying the solvent inside the thermocouple gauge and kind of swishing it around, it will help clean all the crud off that thermal couple wire but remember you, this is a delicate wire so you don't want to really bang it against anything you don't want to drop the sensor you want to treat it fairly carefully and then once you dump all the the solvent out you allow it to dry now the rear of the thermal couple gauge has eight pins and in the harvest right uh, situation we only use four pins uh, the center lug has like this little knob on it that only allows you to push the circuit board one way so when you're ready to seat the circuit board to the thermal couple gauge make sure you have this little lug in the proper relationship to the circuit board pins number seven and pins number five belong to the thermal couple side and these are marked with polarity Pins number one and pins number three belong to the heater filament side and they are also marked with polarity. When using an ohmmeter, we are primarily testing for continuity and in this case would be on pins number three and one, which is for the heater. As long as we have continuity, the sensor is probably good, but what we're actually testing for is an open circuit. This is where there's actually an open where the 
current can no longer flow. If you have a reading of no ohms, then that would be an indication of an open circuit and the sensor would be bad. A reading of 1.4 ohms could indicate that the sensor is in working order and that there is continuity for the heater circuit. And the same can be said with the thermocouple side. When testing with an ohmmeter, we'd test pins number five and seven for continuity. If you don't have any continuity with an ohmmeter, that could be because there is an open in the thermocouple circuit and the sensor would be bad. Now there's some more detailed readings which are extremely hard to get. And at this point, I would not proceed any further unless you have the proper equipment, but I'll touch on them lightly. But the thermocouple output should be between 25 and 30 millivolts depending on the temperature, the pressure, and the dirt. Now this is proprietary information on harvest right, so I cannot give you the actual measurement of how much the thermocouple on the harvest right freeze dryer will produce. Some resistance of 2 to 7 ohms may be readable but not reliable on the thermocouple circuit. But it is possible to, to test the amperage uh, readings in the socket for the thermocouple. And basically in, in the industry standards, they're around 165 milliamps. And that is the power that is generated to heat the heated wire inside. Harvest Wright would not release this information because for them this is proprietary information. I'm coming to you from my alternative shop, otherwise known as my kitchen. And we're going to be replacing the pressure transducer that's up in this corner here. But like always, we need to take off the back end. So I'm going to take off all the fasteners to the back cabinet except for these two up here that will just hold the back end from falling down on me. Pretty simple. If you're going to be using power tools to take these off is one thing, but putting them back on, you got to be careful not to strip the threads. And I think this is a 3 16th bit that I'm using. And the last one Then to take the top off of here, pretty simple. Just grab this and give it a quick jerk backwards, and that comes right off. These are the new parts. I got the transducer here, the circuit board, and a new cable. The transducer is screwed in to this housing right here. Uh, it looks like a quarter inch uh, male thread. Then we have the transducer or the sensor, and then the sensor is plugged into the circuit board by way of a four pin socket. So we're just going to slide that off just like so. Pretty simple. We're going to just leave that here for now. And we're going to have to get a wrench. It looks like maybe a half inch 9 16 to unscrew this right here. So this is a 9 16 and we're going to do righty tidy lefty loosey. So we're just going to go and spin this right on off. I guess we could take off this panel right here, but I don't think it's really necessary. So, pretty simple. So, we're going to get our new one, throw some Teflon tape on the threads, and put that in place. We're going to put about three rounds of Teflon tape on new threads. I may have said quarter inch threads. These look like they're eighth inch threads. And 
this goes right back into the hole here. Now the reason I'm replacing this is I had quite the interesting experience. I had the dreaded inadequate vacuum message a couple of days ago and I went through, checked for all the leaks and I could not find a single leak anywhere on my freeze dryer. And so I hooked up a micron gauge and I'll show you what that is just in a moment. And I was able to pull a vacuum just on the chamber alone down to about 185 microns. And microns and millitor are basically the same thing. So my micron gauge said about 185 or so, but the harvest right gauge in the corner had like 1,200. And then all of a sudden it went from 1,200 and jumped up to 140,000. And then after a while, it jumped back down to about 70,000. It was just jumping all over the place. And so I'm pretty sure that something is amiss. Now, there's no torque requirements on this, so I'm just gonna do it to where it feels tight. Don't wanna over tighten it, you don't wanna don't want strip anything out. So that's back in place. Now, the only thing we need to take a look at, on the back of this shaft, on the back of this transducer is a center pin that has a little nub on it. And we wanna be able to line up that nub to the open socket that matches up with it. So if the socket went in this position, we wanna make sure, so this nub has to be pointing out towards this, this side of the freeze dryer. So I'm gonna to have to turn this about another 90 degrees to get that right into place right there. So I'm going to go ahead and take off the plug here. And get the new circuit board. And this will just go right back into place here. And we're going to get the new plug, wrap it around. And we're done. That was what, maybe 10, 15 minutes. So um, before I close everything up, I'm going to bring up the vacuum again. And I'll show you the difference between the readings that I have with my micron gauge and the harvest strike right gauge. So well, this is a thermal couple gauge right here. And everyone who's ever opened up a freeze dryer has probably seen it. Now the proper name is a thermal couple gauge, but we're just gonna call it say a pressure sensor. There's four pins behind it. The two back here go to the positive and negative heater wire. The two in the front go to the positive and negative thermal couple. Now these pins can vary depending on the orientation of the sensor. So the uh, orientation pin in the center is actually pointing right here. So I know which one is which. And if you're gonna be testing this, you're gonna to have to determine the orientation for the proper pin setting. Now there are some resistance readings that can be taken back here, but they're extremely sensitive. They only go down to one or two ohms and many multimeters may not do that. Over here, I have a good old Harbor Freight uh, multimeter. And if, if I go ahead and test these two pins on the thermal couple side, if I can get in here, you can see that I'm not getting really any reading. I'm, I'm getting zeros because the Harbor Freight, as good as the Harbor Freight gauge is, it's just not sensitive enough. Now, if I go to my Klein tool multimeter and this guy cost me about $200. They're expensive 
and please don't run out and buy one just for this purpose but let's throw it on here and so you can see on the thermal couple side I'm getting about 1.4 ohms now if I go over here on the heater side kind of hard to get back in here I'm fluctuating about 1.4 1.6 ohms now between the heater wire and the thermal couple wire all these pins will will have continuity between each other but it's the very finite amount of continuity between each other is what you're searching for. So if you don't have a really good uh, ohm meter, it, this may be kind of difficult to do. You're really not trying to get any resistance reading on these pins as much as you're trying to find out if there might be an open, such like cutting a wire, if there's going to be an open between the thermal couple pins or an open on the heater wire pins so unfortunately I can't demonstrate that because I do not have an open on this unit and I really don't want to destroy my unit to demonstrate so this level of, of troubleshooting may be difficult and you may not want to go down that road the thing you can really do with the thermal couple gauge is clean it and reinstall it Thermal couple gauges can be tested electronically, but it can be extremely difficult. But if you've been having a problem with getting vacuum error messages on your freeze dryer and you've gone through and checked all the leaks and you're pretty confident that you don't have a leak, it could be that this thing is misbehaving. Testing them is possible, but it is extremely difficult unless you have the proper equipment and even I do not have the proper equipment to test these thoroughly I mean you can test the resistance back on these pins but that's about the best you can do just to make sure that the heater wire inside and the thermal couple doesn't have an open however you can clean these and often if food particulates and dirt and garbage and oils get down inside this orifice it can get on the heater wire inside and make it so that the heat can't generate very that the heat can't transfer to the thermal couple very well and this will give you all sorts of poor readings now when thinking about cleaning these there are a couple of chemicals that you can use the first one that is carburetor cleaner but the only problem with carburetor cleaner I mean it's a good cleaner it can dissolve a lot of crud but this can leave just a little bit of a film behind that may not be conducive to your part and so I'm gonna say pass on carburetor cleaner now brake cleaner will leave no residue behind but the problem with brake cleaner is on some certain plastics brake cleaner can swell some plastics and cause them to break and I don't know if there's any plastics back in back behind here but I wouldn't want to risk that from happening so I'm gonna pass on the brake cleaner there is a product that can be found in most auto parts stores and it's mass airflow sensor cleaner this product will dissolve a lot of the grit and the dirt and everything but it's also safe on plastics and so we're going to use this to clean the sensor and we're going to spray this inside and kind of swish it around we're not going to treat this like a Morocco You've got to be careful with these things but we're going to go ahead and spray it in switch it swish it around and then go ahead and empty it out mass airflow cleaner sensor has a very strong solvent smell so you don't want to do this in your house I'm going to do it out in the garage you might actually want to do it outside so we're going to spray this in in this orifice here but just be mindful that it can kick back out and so you don't want this stuff going into your eyes so what we're going to do I got a paper towel ready here so we're going to put the tube inside of the sensor 
and we're going to spray it around now you don't want to you just barely want to put the tube in far enough to get it inside you do not want to get anywhere near the inside of this where the wire heater is going to be so stay away from the back end of the sensor and we don't want to spray it direct we're going to deflect it off the sides of the wall because we don't want to damage anything in the rear there so we're going to get this up here and I'm going to put the tube just barely inside but I still have to see it okay I'm going to shut that a little bit I'm going to go ahead and spray it around inside uh, now it's filled so I'm just going to twirl this around a little bit kind of let it agitate inside there that this stuff will dry fairly fast so I'm going to shake all that out you do not want to drop this so I'm going to look inside of here and it looks really clean inside Now, the thing about these, the focal point on this instrument is about a quarter inch away from the tip. So I can use this and kind of scan the front of this sensor. But if I want to peer way back in here, then I need to take the tip off of this and then hold it way up close like that. That way the focal point is going to be way back where I can see the heated wires. I can see the heated wires. They're still connected. I don't see any breaks in them. But I'm going to clean this one more time. I do see some goobers and stuff on the heated wires. So I'm going to spray this one more time. And it's going to be just kind of agitate that one more time. Pour some of that out. And this mass airflow cleaner dries and evaporates very, very fast. Let's make a peek inside of here one more time. Oh, that looks really clean now. You can see the thermal couple in the center and the four wires. Now, in my am animation, I only showed one wire, but these ha generally have four. Now, if you're having vacuum issues, it could be that you don't have a vacuum leak at all. It could be that this sensor is either bad or it's dirty. And with all the food that we freeze dry and all the garbage it gets in and all the garbage gets in the freeze dryer I'm surprised that these don't get more dirty so anyway I'm gonna let this air dry and then I'll install it in into my freeze dryer and see what happens and just a note on this also this is some Teflon tape. These do require Teflon tape to put them back in. You cannot afford to have any leaks. If you have a hard time getting this Teflon tape off, you can use a wire brush and brush it off, but you'll need to install new Teflon on these sensors.